So today I'm going to talk about how you can do ad hoc reporting in ClickSense. So first, my name is Tommy Layakumalafe, and what I try to do is I try to explain problems I face as a solution architect and how you could possibly resolve them. So I'm going to go first into a finished report where you're going to see this um, ad hoc reporting where I'm making selections, um, states and such. And now I'm going to build this ad hoc report by just selecting the dimensions and measures on the left side. And you notice the table on the right side populates based on these selections. And now I can choose to export this to Excel or to some other, you know, um, CSV file or whatever and do further analysis. So now that you've seen kind of the end goal, let's show you how this will be done in ClickSense. First, I have my list of dimensions and measures, right? These are dimension, dimensions and measures I already have in my application. I've made the calculations in this. What I did is I created um, uh, master items for them. And now I label dimensions and measures. These are just two tables I'm bringing in. You can call them whatever. And I'm going to bring in the fields I want. Here, I'm making it super simple, just these three fields, so three dimensions, three measures to make it super simple. I'm going to create a new sheet to demonstrate this use case. So I'm going to bring in, I'll bring in a filter pane for the dimension and one for the measure, just like you saw in the finished application, in the finished dashboard earlier. Right, so now I've brought in the dimensions, I've brought in the measures, and what next? Now I'm going to bring in the table that's going to be referencing these dimensions and measures when users select them. But as you remember, the dimensions here would actually be dimensions from a master item, right? I'm going to select based on my master items a name that corresponds to each of those dimensions and measures I've brought in, right? So I have average, you know, but the dimensions I've brought in the budget time, uh, it's hard to see here for me, budget period and custom. I'm going to bring those in <clears throat> for my, uh, for my table. And once that's brought in, I'm now going to have to, you know, as you can see, of course, I see everything on the table like a typical click sense chart. But what I need to do is um, add some conditions. So, so this is where you see me add some conditions where this condition here is I'm using the function called the substring count. And this this value is going to be either one or zero, right? Because if the dimension I select is that particular dimension, in this case, basket item, is either going to be a one or a zero. And this is what I want for my show, for my show column if, right? The values can be either one or zero, one meaning true, zero meaning false. And that's what I'm going to do here for the other um, dimensions I have, making them either ones or zeros using that substring function. Pretty straightforward for the first part, right? So now I've done that for the dimensions. And now what you're still seeing is the table is still showing all the values. And that's because I need to include in the table itself a condition. And that's what you're going to see here, where I only want to show the table if at least a measure has been selected and a dimension has been selected. And then I want to show some note whenever so the user knows to make those selections. Right. So what this is going to do is nothing is going to be shown until a user selects a dimension and measure. Now I'm adding my measures, right? So I'm going to add this, the three measures on the left side. And for you, it can be as many combinations of measures as you have in your master items list. And now, just like I did with the dimensions, all you see me do is I'm changing the, me the, the, the function to have the measures to be the one, what's concatenated. And now I duplicate that same work for the other measures, the average lead time, average sales, and so forth and custom account. Super straightforward. Now you've seen the dimensions and measures. I've made those adjustments. Now when I make my selections for a dimension and a measure or more than a dimension or at least a measure, you see everything populates. And of course, this is a table like you know it. I can add style into it. I can add, you know, formatting to this table, even background colors to make it pop so that the end user that's doing the analysis can really get the full aesthetics of the of the tool.